In the world of basketball, few players have been more celebrated or more exciting to watch than Shaquille O'Neal. The Newark, New Jersey native has attributed much of his success, both on and off the court, to the support and values instilled in him at the Boys and Girls Club. Over the years, Shaq has been an avid spokesperson and fundraiser for the organization and was a major contributor to the club's Children's Dental and Vision Center, which provides free care to low-income children. As part of our Chasing the Dream initiative that tackles poverty and opportunity in America, NJTV's Michael Hill had a chance to speak with Shaq. Michael asked the basketball legend what it meant to have a place like the Boys and Girls Club when he was a kid growing up on the mean streets of Newark. This is the place where it all started. Uh, both parents had jobs, couldn't afford babysitters. Good thing for me, I live right across the street, Clinton and Avon, right there. Those projects right there. So I was instructed to, after school, come here and wait till one of us can get you. And there's a lady by the name of Miss Banks, she's still here. Serena. She's like, Everybody's aunt, everybody's mom, everybody's grandma. She was one that uh, just, you know, made sure all the kids went in the right direction. So, you know, hers, hers is very simple. Let me see your homework first. So education was very important. And after we show her the homework, we get to come up here and play. So this, this was my safe haven, but it was also a place where I could cultivate my dreams. You learned a lot here about yourself. I learned a lot. I learned that. I learned, the first thing I learned was how to turn criticism into motivation. I was coming over here at nine, 10 years old, bigger than everybody. So of course, when you're bigger than everybody, everybody expects you to be Michael Jordan already, but terrible. Couldn't dribble, couldn't play, couldn't dunk, but always had that, that drive and that determination. If you were not here and this club were not here, where would Shaquille O'Neal have been? I think about it all the time. Uh, I, had to, I had to learn the hard way on how to become a leader and not a follower. I owe this place. I owe the Boys and Girls Club of America. That's why I keep coming back. If it wasn't for this place, it'd be no Shaquille O'Neal or a Shaquille O'Neal brand. And it's even gym right here. And it's even more now. It offers even more now than when you were a kid. Yeah, they didn't have any of this when I was a kid. And that's why I said I, you know, teamed up with them and I come back and you know, we help raise money and I help build all the stuff they have in there now. And it's awesome. Uh, this is a pretty big deal. In, in a lot of neighborhoods, kids probably never get a chance to go to the dentist. They never have a chance to go get their eyes examined. In this case, some of the issues that may crop up later on in life can be addressed right now. What's it going to be like putting glasses on these kids for free? You know, it's a, it's a big ordeal. You know, kids are shy by nature. So if you can't see, you won't read. I can't see that, I won't read. And years after that, you know, just adds to, you know, illiteracy. So if we, if we get them in there, get them tested, said, tell them don't worry about it, pick out a pair. And then, you know, we associate reading with comic books and, you know, you know other little books and fun books. Now we start to, you know, bring up their comprehension. And that's what we want for the youngsters. So, you know, when I got together with, you know, Dr. Carboni and, you know, all the friends, we said, hey, you gotta make it free, everything done right. And it's, it's, you know, it's wonderful. People call it giving back. This, this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to do it because my mother told me to do it. Mom says, you need to go back and fix that place up. You need to go back to Newark and fix Newark up. You know, I see a you know, family that, that don't have a house. Handle that. So all the stuff that I'm doing, some people may call it giving back, but I'm taking orders from the person who, who raised me, Lucille O'Neill Harrison. And you vow to keep that promise? Any man that doesn't, keep a promise to his mother is not a real man. Any man that doesn't love and honor his, his mother or any woman is not a real man. So, you know, my mom has worked hard for me. And, you, you know, the reason why I've, I've, I've worked hard for her because, you know, I appreciated that. And funny thing about our relationship is, is her mother told her when I was born, this one's special. Watch out for this one. This, this one right here is gonna be, gonna be world known. One years old, my grandmother told my mother, this right here, everybody's gonna know this guy's name. So I'm just doing what I'm told. As I listen to you tell your story about uh, this club and what you learned here, you knew then when you were a kid, despite the, the minor juvenile delinquency and things like that and other struggles you may have had, you knew then you were special. I knew I was special, but I didn't know I was gonna make it. Because, you know, you got 50% of people telling you, you're gonna be this. 
and another 50 telling you you're not going to be that. And then when you're trying to do the actual action, you're not as good, you, you, you sort of lean to the, well, maybe I'm not going to go pro. Maybe I'm not going to get a scholarship. But one thing my mother and father always taught me is to never give up. Never give up. Like, I could be up here doing homework and I couldn't get it right and Ms. Banks would not give me the answer. She'd be like, I'm not helping. Don't you give up. Do it again. Six times five is... Go on, baby. Use your fingers. Six times five is 30. That's right, baby. So, you know, growing up in Newark, you can't give up anyway. Can't give up. You can never give up growing up in Newark. In making the contributions you've made here, these kids know somebody cares about them. I think they know that I care, but basically I'm just telling them that, hey, in the same situation you're from, I know you look at me now and you see all the, all the toys, but before you get to the toys, you gotta get to, you know, you gotta start from somewhere. So I'm from the same place you're from. I used to eat, you know, I used to eat once a day also, and I used to go Christmases with, when, without getting any presents. So I understand what you're going through. However, this is the blueprint. I know it, because I wrote it. I'm a doctor. All you got to do is study this and master this, and it's a hell of a chance that you can become even, even as successful or more successful than me. That's it. Simple. Respect your parents. Be a leader, not a follower. Never give up. Follow your dreams. That's it. And that's all they told me when I was young. Be a leader, man. Don't follow them. Hey, I know you missed 10 shots in a row, and they're saying you'll never be a good player. Never give up. Don't you be talking back to that to that met the man like that. Go over there and say yes sir, no sir. That's all I had. I wasn't a I wasn't a weird kid. I wasn't the greatest athlete. I wasn't the fast guy. But those those principles right there made me who I am today. And that's what I took it right right here. Simple. All you gotta do is follow this. If you follow these, bam, you can get out. You've had an important mentor in your life. Yeah, Dale Brown. Uh, Thirteen years old, six nine, couldn't dunk, couldn't play. Dale Brown comes to my father's army base in West Germany. In Germany? In Germany. We were in West Germany at the time, and my father says, hey, let's go listen to this guy, coach, maybe you can get a scholarship. So I talked to him, I was like, coach, 6'9", can't play, can't dunk. Can you help me out with some exercise to strengthen my lower extremities? A word I learned in the dictionary the day before yesterday because I was on punishment. Whenever I was on punishment, father, made me read out the dictionary. So I'm thinking, big words, talk to a college coach, maybe I get in. So he puts his hand on me and says, how long you been in the Army? I'm like, I'm not in the Army, I'm 13. So he's like, what, 13? So we kept in touch. And what I really liked about Dale Brown is he always sent me quotes, pamphlets, exercise every week, every week in Germany. I read them, I read them, and then I had to write him a painful letter, man. All the stuff you sent me didn't work. Thanks for the help, I appreciate you. I'm gonna quit now, I'm gonna just join the army like my dad, love you. Next letter I get, no, I don't want you to quit. You know what, forget basketball. I want you to focus on your education. When you get back to the States and graduate, call me. I'll give you a scholarship. This is when I was 13, I wasn't, I wasn't, nobody knew who I was. I was 13, he said, I'll give you a scholarship. I had the papers and everything. Financial aid, done, we'll take care of it. And that's why I chose to go to LSU, because mm -hmm. he, he saw something to me that I didn't see it myself. And then by the time I got back from, to, to, from Germany to San Antonio, I was the number one player in, in uh, high school at the time. And, but I was like, you know what, I'm going to choose this guy, because he helped me. He helped me through the way. Mm -hmm. And when, once you went to LSU? He went to LSU, he took care of me, and had the same principles uh, my parents have. You know, like, uh, Heard you were out with some guys drinking the other day. You know better than that. You know to be a leader and not a fight. Yes, sir. Next time you see that happen and people taking pictures, you need to you need to get out of there. You know you don't drink. I don't want you around that crowd. Yes, sir. So it was very, very tough. Didn't go to class. You'd have to run 15 laps in the morning before you went to class. So it was very, very tough. And, you know, tough love only, you know, propelled me to greatness. You're in retirement now. You don't miss the game, do you? Never. No, not at all. Tell me why. When it's your turn, it's your turn. When it's not your turn, it's not your turn. I knew that every, every superstar athlete has a, a relatively small window to, to, to make a name for themselves. Uh, luckily, I came in when all the old stars were going out. It was my turn for a while, and you know, and got teamed up with Kobe, and it was our turn for a while, and then 
you know, split up and then it was still my turn. And then for me right here, the other guys calling up. So I played 19 years, but I had a, a strong 15 years where it was shack, 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 shack. It sure was. And I, <clears throat> I knew that uh, one day Father Tom was going to say, it's time for you to sit down and relax. Surely you expected that given a career you've had in the NBA that, that it would be a cinch that you would be inducted into the Hall of Fame. I expected it, no. I expected it not because I was a great player. I expected it because everything my mother and father has, have taught me has come true. You don't need to follow him and he's getting that little hundred dollars. You go to school, get an education, you have a hundred thousand. You don't need to. You don't need to do none of that. You just need to do this. So everything they've told me has come true. I just wish my father was still here, right. so I could share this moment with him. Because it was. It was sometimes where I didn't believe in myself. Mm. Like uh, I'm good, but I'm not that good. Mm. That that, that uh, Michael Jordan. He's. Whew, I'll never get to that level. And then you just gotta, you know, keep going. And then boom, Mike's gone. My turn went off three in a row. Mm. So you know, every time I've, I've stuck to my. I don't want to use the word guns, but every time I stuck to my principles, I've never been let down. People come to Newark through Newark, and they see certain neighborhoods, and they see risk, and won't make the investment, won't give it the time of day. What do you see that they don't see? I see beautiful people. I see relatives. I see people trying to make it. I see people trying to save it. You know, the little little riffraffs that, that are doing what they do, that can, can be controlled. But, you know, I, I think it's our job to keep Norton beautiful. Uh, I'm investing a lot, building a lot, and we urge anybody else to come and build it. Nuke's a beautiful place. You can care about any place in the world, do whatever you want to do. What, why Newark? I know you made the, the, the promise to... Because my, my mother and father created a program called Shack. They got all the parts from Newark. You can't find the parts anywhere else. So and if I want to keep my sharpness, I got to come back home and get my parts replaced. Period. That's why. Mm. They don't build. They, they, they don't build this sexiness anywhere else. <laughs> they build it you right did, here you did say sexiness, right? Sexiness. S e x i n e s s s. Sexiness. <laughs>